Hi everybody. How are you doing today? <sighs> Thanks for joining me. My name is Agnes Friedlander and some of you might know me as Aggie. Uh, that's a nickname my mother gave me. I didn't really like it until I got older. I hated it when I was little. <laughs> Anybody else out there that hated their name when they were little? Um, <clears throat> But yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a few minutes. I, um, I thought I would just share um, some painting that I'm doing this morning. I'm painting a little owl on a wood board. I just kind of really just started it. It might look like I've done a lot, but I really haven't. And, uh, oh good, my air conditioner turned off. I'm glad it was kind of loud. So, um, yeah, if you're not familiar with my business, it's called Paint Party Girl, and I teach people how to paint. Um, but you know, it's more than it's more than that. It's um, it's a social gathering uh, for people to get together, um, you know, have some fun, learn something new, maybe uh, socialize. You know, kick back, relax. A lot of the events, um, wine is offered. I'll have them at venues where they, where they, um, you know, sell drinks and food. So it's a good thing because it increases business to, uh, you know, local bars and restaurants and things like that. Um, and you know, my home base is Kenosha, but I do travel all around. The Chicago and Milwaukee area. I, I basically I don't mind traveling. So yeah, I teach large groups. Uh, my minimum is 10 people. Uh, I also do just in-person uh, workshops on more advanced types of painting. Um, so I'm going to turn this around so you can see me painting. Forgive me while you see the camera moving, but I've got a little um, mount holding up my iPhone. I'm just using my iPhone for this. And I am going to show you, it's just, I, I, I decided to call this coffee talk and painting. <laughs> you know, because it's fun to just sit and paint and talk. Right? And, oh, I just splattered on my owl. So these, these painting on wood is pretty forgiving. And uh, I really just started offering wood as an option for painting at my paint parties. Um, so yeah, if you're here, say hello. Let me know where you're from. And uh, if you're a painter, what do you like painting? I don't know if I can see. Huh. If I can see... My live, I have nobody here with me right now. Well, maybe, maybe that's because I didn't announce ahead of time that I was doing this. But maybe you're going to be watching this later, and you know that's cool too. So I'm going to be using some lamp black here, and I'm going to paint in my owl's eyes right now. Basically, I started with a board that looked a lot like this one. I'm going to show you this other large board that I started. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but this is a really large uh, wood palette that I assembled and I used uh, like four or five different shades of chalk paint and just kind of painted it on in splotches without any rhyme or reason. And that's basically my base of my background, my base background. And, and then I took a piece of chalk, <clears throat> white chalk, and I sketched on, you know, real quickly, I just sketched on an, um, this owl face, and the nice thing about using chalk, this is just regular, you know, school chalk. Nice thing about using chalk is that you can wipe it off. Um, you can you can wipe it off, like here, I'll just show you. Um, I can wipe that off with my paper towel, 
but it's going to leave a little bit of a hint of it still, so I can just get a wet brush. Oh, this brush got stiff, I think. I didn't wash this brush out. Ooh, bad Aggie. So with a, with a damp brush, I can wipe off that line. So chalk makes a nice thing to sketch with because you can wipe off your sketchy lines, your sketchy chalk lines with a wet brush. So that's what I did. I just um, painted that background and it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I sketched on an owl face and a wing down here. So um, I had it laying around. I was just looking at it and I was walking by it this morning and I thought, you know, I feel like painting that. So that's um, something that I learned a long time ago. If you want to build a little bit more creativity into your life and some impromptu sessions where you just sit down, even if it's just a few minutes, I would say find a little corner, designate a little space somewhere in your house where you have a few art supplies set up. And um, even if you can only work a few minutes on something, it's, you know, the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. If you leave a painting like this where you've worked on it a few minutes, if you leave it sitting there and you walk by, you're going to want to work on it a little bit more. Um, and having the supplies out where you can see them, it basically um, sets you up for success. So um, that was one of the best tips I ever learned many, many years ago when I, when I was starting out getting back into my painting routine. Uh, a lot of people start out um, thinking that they just don't have time and they're never going to do it. But uh, if you build it in like that, it helps. You, you will do it, even if it's just a few minutes at a time. So um, I am just going to um, play around with this a little bit more. I'm using um, these beautiful chalk paints that I got at um, Walmart. Somebody called it Wally World the other day. I saw somebody referring to it as Wally World. I thought that was funny. Um, and I'm, I'm really loving these chalk paints. They're really, uh, I don't know, I love the texture of them. Um, and I'm going to be very loose with this. Um, so yeah, if you're just getting here, I see I got two people. I don't know who you are, but I would love it if you would say hello and, um, you know, say something about yourself, where you're from, what are you doing today, are you painting anything, uh, and what can I help you learn how to paint, if anything. I don't think I have the words on, I don't know if you guys are talking or not. So. Um, I think I feel compelled that I have to keep talking and talking the whole time, but I guess really I don't have to, right? So I want to um, get his eyeballs painted in. And I'm going to use my lamp black. This is just some cheapy Americana uh, paint, you know. And I'm going to get his eyeballs painted in. And I used, oh, I forgot to tell you, I used Sharpie marker. So first I sketched in with a piece of white chalk until I got a rough drawing about how I liked it. And um, then I got my Sharpie marker out and I um, kind of drew those lines in a little bit more. Does that make sense? And um, the nice thing about Sharpie marker is if you paint over it, it'll bleed back through the paint unless you paint really, really thick. So that's a, a really nice tip for you. If you didn't know that, you probably knew that already. I think most people know that. But um, now I'm going in and painting the pupils. 
right? That's making a big difference already. And I figure, you know what, I'm just going to work on this guy here and there whenever the mood strikes. Um, my last step is going to be painting in black lines around all of this. Nice, nice black um, lines outlining the outlining these feathers and the wing. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the sky up here yet. Maybe it's going to be nighttime. You know, I don't know. But this is the first one I'm doing like this, and I can tell I'm going to paint more of these. I just know it. <clears throat> um, I enjoy painting in a series. A lot of people that come to my paint parties I tell them, you know what, now you know how to paint this painting. Go home and paint it again. And some people do. And, you know, the first time you paint something, it's not going to be as good as if you paint it, um, you know, paint it, a, paint it another time after you've had the benefit of kind of roughing the first one. Uh, it's really fun to go do another one and because you know a little bit more and you can perfect some things and maybe you're going to be a little bit looser um, I'm always trying to loosen up so I am trying to promote my business a little bit more I'm gearing up for uh, my launch of my online classes and um, I'm showing people uh, some freebies on how I paint so you get to know what my style is. Uh, I really, really love teaching people and sharing what I know. I don't hold anything back from um, people that are painting with me, students. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see, what was I? I was going to get some brown. I think I left the brown on my other table. So if you have any questions, um, let me know. Let's see. I can't see anything that anybody's saying. I wonder if I have it in silent mode. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? If you leave a comment with a question, I will... I will answer you later. <laughs> How's that sound? Oh, so here's what I'm using. I'm using Waverly Inspirations paint. So this is uh, called Truffle, this brown. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to like it, but... Oh, it's not even open yet, so I haven't even used it. That's okay. Um, I don't know what color I want to make his eyes. Maybe his eyes will be more greenish. Have you guys used this chalk paint? It is really nice stuff. It's very, very forgiving. And uh, what I like about painting on wood is I like using my sander at the end to, um, to sand over, sand off some of the paint. All right. So it's Thursday, right? Is it Thursday or Friday? I think it's Thursday. What do you guys got going on today? Talk to me. <laughs> Somebody talk to me. Maybe you are talking to me and I just don't know it. I don't know. So I'm putting some brown on his nose. I don't know. Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm going to outline this mask here a little bit. So yeah, you got to remember that animals always have neutral tones in them. That's probably so that they blend into the background. It's like their camouflage, right? So I'm going to outline the mask area a little bit. And if I don't like some of these colors, I can always paint over them again with another color. But I like this idea of this temperature shift. So, you know, those are cool colors 
in the background and then I'm using a warm brown on top of it. And that always makes things a little bit more interesting, right? Um, so his pupil is black, but I'm going to put, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Um, that kind of helps create more interest and it also makes, you always want an eye to look wet. And the way to do that is to have, um, is to have some lighter tones. Some variation like that. And so I'm trying to uh, think about several things here. I want a center of interest um, to be the face. So I'm going to put a lot more detail around the face. And a couple of ways that you can create um, you know, a center of interest is contrast. So this face is definitely going to have some contrast because there's, you know, a light face. The black, I think the only black I'm going to use is going to be on the eyes like you see here now. And that's going to really create that um, focus that I want right there. That that's the main part, obviously, the face, right? And then I'm trying to be random with my with my little dots. I'm trying not to make them all perfect and uniform. I see a lot of people when they're starting out doing that. It's a common a common thing. It's kind of the way our brain works. Our brain wants to make things perfectly uniform for some reason. But in nature, it's not like that, is it? <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I just have this thing for doing these spotty owls. I just love it. You know? And I would love for you to discover um, paintings that you enjoy doing. That bring you joy. So, that's part of why I'm doing this. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm putting like a different, a warmer color in between. And I don't know if you can pick up on all this interesting variation going on. Hopefully it's showing. And I'm just gonna layer and layer and layer more colors on here. It's kind of a really zen thing for me. I, I just find this really relaxing, it truly is. Uh, all right. So what I wanted to say too is if you are interested in finding out about my upcoming online classes that I'm going to be offering, um, just send me, I just want your email. Send me your email in like a private message. You could just direct DM me private message me and I will put you on my email list. I'm going to be sending out to all of my Paint Party Girl customers, giving them uh, advance notice and special discount pricing on my, on my classes. So the reason I'm doing video classes is that, oh, I like that, the brown eyes. I don't know, do owls have brown eyes? I guess they do. Actually, a lot of times owls have like yellowish eyes, don't they? Um, so, yeah, what I realized is I think it's, um, maybe I'll put a greenish yellow in the eyes too now. Um, I don't know, wouldn't it be kind of neat to be able to just paint at home, to follow along at home? I think a lot of people that paint with me, uh, in case you don't know, I have, I mean, I've literally taught over 5,000 people how to paint. Uh, I've been doing this for um, about five years now. I think I'm just, I just came up on my five-year anniversary. And um, I have come to realize that, I mean, I'm still going to do, I'm still going to do it. I love it so much. I'm still going to do in-person classes, of course. But... I realize that video is such a great way to learn how to paint because you can control you can control it. I take online classes. I have a couple of different 
Actually, I have, I've taken so many. I have, I'm signed up for so many right now that I don't even have time to do because my business is, is so busy. But um, I actually love learning how to paint through video because I can stop, pause, rewind, you know, all that good stuff. And um, so all I'm doing here is I'm painting in the, you know, the, the colored part of the eye. I can paint that black pupil back in as many times as I want. So I had brown and then I added green and because my brown was so wet, it just blended right in. So I'm gonna let that be and I think I am gonna like the green on there, but I need to let it dry a little bit. So if you've been to my classes, you know what I do. I, I, um, I'll say, let's bounce around to another area. Gotta let, give that section time to dry. So, um, and what I like about this style of painting these dots is that it's very easy to do little shifts of color and experiment. It's almost like a lesson in color when you're doing this, this type of stuff because you're seeing how um, colors work with each other. And um, because color is very relational, right? You guys have heard that before. Um, it may look one way on your palette, but it you know it doesn't matter how it looks on the on the mixing plate. <laughs> the way it looks on here, it's not going to look the same on on the painting, right? When it's next to a certain color. So this is kind of a duller green color, but I think you do have to have some dull colors um, to make the bright colors stand out more, right? So, yep, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. And anytime I want, I can stop and hit this with the blow dryer and it's like a save as, <laughs> you know, it'll lock it in. And I think I am gonna do that. I think I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer real quick. Sorry for the blow dryer noise. because I want to put some green on, on the eyes. Alrighty, I think that's good enough. So I'm gonna go back with my green And I am going to re-outline. You know, the eyeball. It'll look much better when I re-outline the pupil and the, um, the eyeliner, as I like to call it. Um, yeah, when I was in high school, I was really good. Everybody knew me as the girl that drew the eyes. <laughs> I loved painting eyes. I still do. So I want to get a little bit of a cool color in here now. This is um, agave, this one is called, this color. wiping the paint off a little bit. So I'm gonna have like a little bit of a blend going on here. All right, so the color is gonna shift a little bit in the, in the iris. And I don't want this to be too persnickety of a, of a painting. I'm gonna, let's use some moss now. So 
So this is kind of a green. So I guess this is a woodsy background back here. And you know, I might decide later that these dots are too similar to the dots on my owl. Maybe I need to change it up and have that be different. We'll see. Dot, dot, dot. So I'm almost, you know, like using this to discover what, what colors are, are working here. All right, that feels pretty good. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to be taking this summer to um, film my painting videos. So if there is something that you would like to um, learn how to paint, maybe there's something that you don't see anybody else out there doing and you're like, how come nobody's doing this? I want to learn how to paint this. Well, let me know. Uh, it's probably something I could do. It's probably something I could offer, you know, why not? Um, and I hope that you will join me and take some of my online classes. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm doing it yet. I might do it as a membership. Uh, and I don't know. Maybe I'll just sell individual classes. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? What would you prefer? Um, you know, there's, there's clubs. You know, there's, there's so many different ways I could do it, right? Groups. I'm still going to do my in-person workshops, though. I just love them so much. But like I say, I think that um, learning how to paint on video, it's, it's, just, it's just smart. It, it really is. And then the neat thing about that too is you could have a paint party at home, you know. Have you guys ever thought about doing that? Anybody ever wanted to be able to, you know, do a paint party at home? Or I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that's too messy. <laughs> so it's so nice to finally be able to have my um, sliding glass door open. I'm here at home in my studio. And it is a pretty beautiful day out. I'm going to have to run out in a few. <clears throat> I really need to go get a pedicure. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see. How's that looking? So I just want to blend this area a little bit more, and then I want to outline the eyes. But I am really liking this. What do you guys think? I am enjoying this so much. I know I don't want to lose this teal, the really pretty teal color. I'm really, I'm really liking that a lot. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that back in. Wow, this needs to be shaken. Yep, yep, yep. No, I don't want that brush. I want this little one. And so, yeah, I use a variety of brushes while I'm painting. And you might think it's strange that I am painting with my canvas flat on a table, but I actually find it to be more comfortable. You know, I really have always enjoyed this painting, painting with it flat on a table. The only thing you have to be careful of is that you don't get a distortion. So every once in a while you need to 
you need to stand up and look directly over what you're painting to make sure that you're not getting a weird distortion going on. Does that make sense? Because that can happen. So I'm just making the eyes a little bit um, more turquoise in the, in the corner. So I put my dark color down first and then I just kind of blot with a lighter mixture. I mixed some of that turquoise in with a, the previous color. And then I'm just still, I'm, I'm even dotting this. And what's nice, this chalk paint, I don't know, it just really lends itself to this sort of a technique. So my brush is very, very dry right now. And I, oh, that, that added a lot, putting that color in the corner. All right, and then I think I want to get this part done. So I think what I'm going to do is, like when you really look at these owls, and I don't have a reference of a photo, but I want this to be a cool, this is this, this is um, pool it's called, the color is called pool. So under the nose here, I want it to be a cool shady color, so I'm using pool. And up at the top around the brows is where I'm going to use um, this warm color called plaster. It's basically off-white, I think. <clears throat> and then that'll look like the light is hitting that upper part above the eyes a little bit more. <clears throat> So yeah, I am going to try to do a lot more of these Facebook Lives. Um, let me know when would be a good time for you if you want to see me painting, if you want to hang out and coffee talk with me like this. What would be a good time for you for me to offer that? Let me know, please. I'm not going to guarantee I can do it at that time, but it'll give me some insight. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. I don't know if you can see that. So it's like texture on texture. And the more variety you have in your painting, the more interesting it's going to look. You, you just, you want variation. And I say that all the time in my classes. Variety is the spice of life. That's what I usually say. Um, I think that people, when they're new to painting, they're kind of reluctant to mix colors. And that's another reason why I like this type of, uh, of a painting, is because it just involves putting a bunch of colors down. And you're going to automatically learn, and you're not going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to automatically learn how to mix colors. The more you do it, the more you learn. <clears throat> so here is my nice, this is called um, plaster, this color. Oh, I just love this. This is so much fun. And I am just dotting it up. Dot, dot, dot it up. So I like the fact that I had a cool color underneath and now you can see my warm color on top. Does that make sense right here? That variation makes it so interesting, right? Variety, variety. And, okay, to make the nose come forward, I'm going to paint like a straight line here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, so I've said this before in um, another live video I did. I'm trying to, trying to share my story a little bit. 
I have always painted. I've always been into art. It's been very healing for me. And, um, oh boy, I don't know where to start. I won't get too deep, but let's just say that I had a corporate job for many, many years, and I was a little bit too removed from the creative process. I got, you know, everywhere I worked, they always promoted me into management. I think I just, I think I just kind of sent a message out that I was a responsible person <laughs> or something. They would always promote me into management. And, you know, when you're managing people, they're the ones creating, you know? And you're basically, um, you know, you're good at what you do, but the whole thing is they want you to teach other people to be as good as you were. And so all, all your effort goes into mentoring and, uh, and coaching, you know? And that's okay, you know, I, I love that. Um, and I became very good at it actually. And, um, but I realized I really missed the direct creative process. I really, really missed it. And so um, eventually through corporate downsizing, which turned out to be a blessing, I, um, I got back into my art. But you know, along the way, I had to learn to loosen up. I had to change the way I was doing things because I was never getting anything done. I, I mean, I was being so perfectionistic that um, it just wasn't fun anymore. And, and if it's not fun, you're not gonna do it. And that's what happened. I stopped doing it. Oh, that's looking really cool. I like that, I like that. Um, so I had to figure out like, <laughs> you know, what do I need to do so that I, how do I, you know, how do I let go? I mean, I wanna paint, but I'm not finishing anything. And that's the reason why I'm not painting is because I'm putting this pressure on myself you know, first of all, yeah, I put a ton of pressure on myself. Um, big, big expectations I had of myself. And um, it, it just zapped all the joy out of it. It really, really did, you guys. I just didn't think I could get anything done. And when I didn't see the evidence quick enough that I was accomplishing these goals, these lofty goals that I had, then I would stop, you know, and I wouldn't do anything. And I, you know, it was like I was defeated before I even started. And um, I know that as creatives, we all do that. And um, boy, it's, it's just, you gotta not do that. So eventually, just through trial and error and experimenting and all that stuff, I eventually, was able to let go. I was able to find some techniques um, for painting that um, that worked. You know that um, okay, this isn't perfect, but you know what? There's kind of some charm to that, and um, other people started seeing it in my work. And oh, another thing. Here's a really big thing. What you think of your work is not necessarily what other people think of your work. I mean, I know that sounds really like, <laughs> you know, common sense, but really, uh, we talk ourselves out of, of even showing our stuff to people. I used to do shows. I used to, you know, sell my work at those, you know, fairs and, um, you know, with the tent and all that stuff. And I would talk myself out of, of showing some of my things because, oh, no one's gonna like this. And one day one of my friends was like, you know what, this is really cool. You should, you know, are you selling these? I'm like, no, no nobody, nobody's gonna buy that. Well, Agnes, you don't know that, they might. You should, you should take this, you should show this. And I did, and it sold. <laughs> and that was a big learning lesson for me. It really, it really was. I mean, don't assume anything you know, don't assume anything. Somebody might really love something that you did. It's true, it's true. 
Um, I don't think I have anybody here with me right now, but you know what? That's okay if you're not here. Maybe you're going to be stopping by later. And if you are watching me later, I just want to say thanks for, um, thanks for watching. I am uh, doing these live videos because I'm promoting my paint party business and my lessons that I'm going to be filming this summer. Lessons just like this, so this gives you a feel for my teaching style. <clears throat> Actually, I would be a lot more um, descriptive of what I'm doing if this were an actual class, but at least this will get you somewhat familiar with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you are interested in learning how to paint, uh, I would love for you to become my student. And what I'm doing is I am going to be offering online classes and you can sign up for them. If you just drop me your email, I will notify you when I start my online classes. And they're going to be video lessons that you can download and, you know, do them whenever you want. Uh, in the convenience and privacy of your own home. You can paint in your pajamas if you want. How cool is that, right? And um, I hope that you will join me in doing that. And let me know what kind of stuff you're interested in learning how to paint. All right, what do you think? So I think what I'll do before I before I finish up here, um, because, gosh, believe it or not, this has been about 45 minutes. I can't believe how quickly the time goes when you're painting. Um, I am going to get that um, eye outline painted in there, the pupil and the eye outline. And, um, <clears throat> wow, this is such a fun one. This is just on board. If you missed uh, the beginning of this video, um, I think you want to, you know, watch it. Watch it again and go back and watch it from the, from the beginning. I will leave it up here. I don't know how long I'm going to leave it up here, but I will be leaving it up here at least for a week. And um, at the beginning of the video, I explained how I started this painting and what I'm using and all that good stuff. So yeah, when you're painting black lines, you always want to have a, a wet brush and you want to properly load your brush. It's very important. Um, so let me get this. Let me just focus a second. Kind of hard to talk and um, paint a nice clean line at the same time, you know? <laughs> this is just one little part where I kind of need to concentrate. And I know I painted I painted the um, I painted the pupil with some lighter brown to give it some dimension and make it look wet. I can always paint that back in. So I'm just painting these lines over again. Cleaning it up just a little bit more because this is my main focus of the painting, obviously. these eyelids, this eyeliner is kind of at a slant. You know, and have fun with this. This, this line work, it's, uh, it is something worth practicing. And um, I'll probably go into depth about how to really get nice clean lines with a brush like this because because this is a lot of people are really intimidated about 
painting black lines on a painting that they just spent a long time working on, getting your background in and all that. I've done so many classes where we're doing trees and then we're gonna put the, the, the branches in and everybody, <laughs> everybody kind of freaks out, you know? And um, it's funny, I'll explain it and show people and they just still don't get it, you know, in person. A lot of people don't necessarily get it right away. And like I say, I think that's because, well, you gotta remember, I'm around people that are drinking, they're socializing with their friends at the same time, and you know, they're not gonna necessarily hear everything I'm saying because they're involved in conversations and all that stuff. And I just kind of thought, well, you know, it'd be really nice for the people that really, you know, that want it um, to be able to offer some of my classes online where they can um, kind of control the environment a little bit more. And, um, and I think you really will learn a lot more. So anyway, there's, there's the eyes outlined again. And I think that helped a lot. I think I am just gonna really quickly, um, I'm adding just a little bit of water to this black. And um, I kind of twirl, twirl, twirl the paint in there. So this is really nice. This is almost like ink. It's very watery. And um, so I can literally come in here and paint these lines like this. Right? That really changes the whole look of it, right? Oh yeah, I like that. I like it, I like it. So the whole thing is that the, the paint really needs to flow easily off of the brush. So that's all in the way you load it and the um, amount of water that you have in your paint. And I'm constantly reloading my brush too. Yep, that black outline really, really helps, doesn't it? A little bit more water. Yeah, if the brush ain't loaded right, it's never gonna look right. And you know, I can always come back on and do more, um, more stuff to this this wing maybe I'll go look at a go look for a reference photo or something maybe I shouldn't have used black on all this maybe it's just taken away from from the head I don't know What do you guys think? I can always paint over that, right? Well, that helped. So yeah, I mean, this is the first one I've done like this, and I could I could easily see doing a series of these or doing them in different colors. Um, I gotta come up with a saying up here. Maybe it'll be uh, "I'll always love you" or something like that. And I think I want a little bit of um, 
brown in the eyeball. Oh, and then we need our we need our white highlight in the eye, right? Got to have a highlight always, always. All right, so I'm mixing brown with black just a little bit. And that's just going to give a little bit more um, interest. in the pupil, right? You don't want it to be too light. You don't want that to be too light. And then I'm gonna put my white highlight. Well, this isn't really white, it's plaster. It's off-white, but it's, it's good, it's fine. So tell me what you think. Tell me um, if you're interested in my upcoming online video classes and you want to be notified when those are starting and get the best price on them, just drop me your email in a private message and I will add you to my email list. Alrighty. Oh yeah, what a cute little owl. So what'd you guys think? Did you guys like that? My cute little owl. What should I say on there? I will always love you. <laughs> could say something like that, right? Um, I can also do it wider. I could have, I could do a really tall one and have the mama and babies like in a row. Wouldn't that be cute? This would be a nice plank uh, sign to put on your front porch, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, that'd be a nice fall one, wouldn't it? All right, guys, thank you so much for um, painting and coffee talk with me, even though I couldn't see what you were saying. Hopefully you guys were chatting all this time, and I'm going to see that in just a moment. Um, but uh, I really appreciate you. <laughs> Hi. I really appreciate you um, watching my video. Like I said, I hope you'll send me your... Um, your email if you want to be included in my list of people that I'm going to be sending the announcement to when I start my online video classes. All right, so have a great Thursday, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.